All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? How you doing, man? I'm good. We are talking a common, uncommon, a good problem to have problem for garage gym athletes. When you reach this point, it's like, yes, I, you've, you've kind of made it. It's a good, it is a good situation to be in, but it's also one of those kind of hard and trickier situations. Yeah. You're no longer at the, like, I wonder if I buy this, if it will become like a clothes rack, you know what I mean? Like how most mm -hmm. people's treadmill ends up. If you're fixing this problem, then yeah, you've definitely made it. So what is the problem, Joe? It is when to know or the deciding, like how to decide when you should get rid of a piece of equipment or upgrade said piece of equipment or realize that you're not using it as unnecessary or you just either you don't need it, don't use it, takes up room. Not It's not worth keeping around for some reason or you want to replace it with something similar or better. Got it. Have you replaced anything? Upgraded? Technically airdyne, but I also it also broke. I, I had a secondhand yeah. airdyne. In number San Diego. one. Yeah, well, number one. If it breaks, if it breaks, you probably time <laughs> yeah. to replace. It, I, my first airdyne was a, a Schwinn that I got from a CrossFit gym, pretty cheap, and I used the hell out of it. And I think eventually the, the like the teeth that that drove the chain would break off, so like it would skip every once in a while. Ah. So I had to get rid of it. Um, as far as other things, it's just been little stuff like, you know, bands. I think you go through bands every couple of years. If you, especially if you leave them outside, um, or if they're, I've been actually thinking get... that recently, like I have some bands I've had for a very long time and my brother's like using them for like, you know, pull-ups assists. I don't use bands a ton. Um, and that's probably why I haven't replaced them, but like he's using them for some pretty serious stuff. And I'm like, I probably need to upgrade these <laughs> once, I, once on I start them. yeah once i start seeing those dry cracks in them i'm like i really don't want to use this until it snaps because that's just a bad time i'm going to spend 20 dollars and just get some new ones yeah also depends on the exercise like a face pull with a band don't you want to make sure that's in good condition <laughs> yeah yeah uh a lot of times when i use it i'll i'll be stepping on the band and do something with it um so not a good situation so yeah that, i mean breaking is one thing um, other replacing that I've done is kettlebells. So when you, when I started off, I would just go on marketplace and buy whatever kettlebells that I could find, but they were like awkward weight. It was like a 50 and then like a 25, like something that is not in the standard was like 35, 44, 53, 62, 70. So it was just an awkward one. So I had a 53 and a 50. So I sold my 50 just to get a 53. So just, just little things like that. But as far as getting rid of pieces of equipment, I'm kind of in that zone now. And it's kind of why I wanted to bring it up because my gym is completely set up. It's, it's completely organized. We finally got our shipment in and I have a few things where I'm just like, this kind of just takes up room. It's, I guess it's nice to have, but I really haven't needed it or used it so long. So I'm wondering if, if I should even keep it around. And one of them is a plyo box. I have two plyo boxes. One is good to have two is unnecessary right now. It is, but it is serving a good purpose right now because it is, the rack or whatever that I set my uh, adjustable dumbbells on. So it's not like on the ground and then I can set something else on it. And then another thing I have, which I guess uh, one thing to weigh as well for getting rid of stuff is um, how much it cost or if it was free. And then if you want to try and sell it or if it's makes more sense to just keep it around because you're not going to get money out of it. And it was so expensive anyway. And one thing that I have is that I've never talked about are battle ropes. I got those years ago. Somebody yeah, got them I didn't even know present. you had them. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've like almost, I've used them like a half a dozen times and that's it. And I'm sure I could use them for like really short intervals and it'd be great. They, they can do really good stuff, but I've just never cared to use them. You have to like loop them around something and then have the space to like drag them all the way out and use them. And I could use them now because of the garage. All I like to do is just move something out of the way, but it's like, I have to specifically uncoil it, take it out, set it up, then use it versus anything else that I would do with that would be like the airdyne or a kettlebell. And it's just there. I mean, I heard those do well on Instagram. Yes. Maybe video that's of maybe. you like doing some battle ropes. That's like, it, it means that you've actually graduated to hardcore and it's worth posting on social media. So that's true. I should, and I'll probably wear a vest during the battle yeah. ropes because that's get likes and hold the kettlebell on the other hand, do like a one handed. <laughs> 
how, how does that, no, you no, put one, one handed. Yeah. Shake, put a chain put around you <laughs> your neck. Uh, but that's, that's about, I mean, I really had, I haven't, I'm just now getting to the point where I, I, I am able to, uh, like look at my stuff and be like, okay, what, what do I need? What do I not need? I also have squat stands that like I haven't used since we got the squat rack, but it's one of those where I, it's, I would, it's nice to have if I ever need people, if I ever have like people come over, cause I have like four or five barbells now. So if I ever decide to host people, it's nice to have those, that little bit of capability, but the other things I just don't see myself using much. Yeah. All right. I, I think I'm kind of like a garage gym hoarder. So I don't know if, as far as getting rid of things. So the things that I have gotten rid of, um, if you've seen any older videos, Joe's been there. My, um, first house I lived in Texas had a massive rig in the backyard. Like that was awesome. 20 feet on. That might, be, that might have been your best gym. Yeah. I might do the same thing here because I can. I just haven't decided if I want to do it yet. Um, cause I have the space, have the similar setup with like a, de- the other house wasn't a detached garage, but I could do it. I might do it again. Anyway, that rig, um, I, I had to sell it just like, it was too giant to store. Um, and I wa- couldn't take it with me. We were moving to North Carolina at the time. So I sold that. That was one thing I got rid of. Other than that, I hold on to things. And so I'll say this kind of in two ways. One, I would say don't be too quick to get rid of things if you really are like pretty dedicated in fitness. Because what I've noticed about myself is I kind of go through like these like phases and I'm okay with doing that because like you've heard me, if, if people have been listening to the podcast for a long time, you've probably heard me talk about cycling a bunch, you know, and I like cycling. I haven't cycled in a while now because it was hurting my lower back. And like every time I'd get back on the bike, it would like my lower black back would flare back up. So I'm just kind of done riding the bike right now for now. And I know that's for now. So I'm not like selling my bike and like getting rid of everything. Right. But I'm taking a a break from the bike and I don't even care because what I really love is I just love fitness. I don't, I'm not like in love with cycling. I'm not in love with the barbell or the kettlebell. Like some people have like their thing, right. I don't really have like that thing. My thing is fitness in in any capacity. And so I will like go, I'll I'll do anything, you know, I'll just like cycle through things that I like. I might be on the treadmill for cardio or I might be on the ski area for cardio. Like I just like go through all these different phases. So if you're anything, anything like me, keep that in mind before you get rid of anything. Um, Now going to other reasons, upgrade. Now I've done a ton of upgrading and getting rid of stuff, but that was going from DIY to steal like you know uh like rogue type stuff and so i would say the number one reason you would want to consider upgrading or getting new stuff is kind of what we were joking about at the beginning of the bands is just safety in general if you have anything that's slightly precarious or you know you don't feel super comfortable with maybe you when you started you got like a, a shoddy squat stand from amazon you're a little bit worried about like what happened if worst case scenario you were have to do a bail or something it just wouldn't catch If you have any safety concerns, I'm going to say it's always worth the money to go ahead and upgrade. Like if, uh, I mean, if you have the money, right, if you're like looking for that, you have the budget, then go ahead and upgrade because getting away with what you have is fine to a certain degree, but the more workouts you do in a gym, just the greater chance of something can go wrong, right? Like eventually something will not be perfect. Um, even when you try to be as safe as possible. So upgrading for safety concerns is a big deal. Um, and then going back to what I was saying about why not to get rid of things is also a reason to buy more things. Like I have a lot of different stuff in my gym, so I can cycle through these, you know, whatever you want to call them, fitness phases or interests that I go through on like these year long, two year long cycles. But I, I just plan to do things for, you know, until I die much later on in life, I hope. Uh, and so that if you're getting bored of something might be another time to upgrade. If you're like, you know, there's no shame in, in losing interest in something and moving on to something else. Because if you look at that as like mental weakness, like, Oh, why can't I just like do this forever? It's, it's not really like that. Like the main thing here is, is performance through consistency, health. Like that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. And so 
I don't care if I don't touch a barbell for three months. I don't care if I don't touch a kettlebell for six months. Like I, I can cycle through all these things. And so if you want to add more things to your garage gym arsenal, so you won't get bored, um, you got to be kind of careful with that. You got to know yourself really well. Cause you don't want to just be like the, like, I just can't stick to a program. I'm going to buy more equipment. Hopefully that'll like get me back into it. I'm talking about when you're already really consistent, but you're just kind of like not in the mood for something, you know, do something else. So that's another way to upgrade equipment. So I'd say safety. And then if you're finding that you're bored in the gym, like if you have like a rower and you're like, I just can't sit on that damn thing again, then, Hey, maybe if you don't necessarily need to sell it, if you need to sell it to get the funds for something new. Okay. But if you don't, then get a new thing and let that, you know, tackle your interest for a few years. So those are kind of my thoughts on it. Well, that's kind of the main reason why we got a spin bike. The first thing we did was get a rower. That was the most obvious one. We had that for a while. And then after a while, I was just like kind of beat up on the rower and we were living in San Diego. So running weather all year long, but I still wanted something else to use when I didn't even want to run or, you know, maybe it was rainy or there was just something else that I needed. And so we got a spin bike because just to, to vary it. And I've gone through phases. I think the rower is the main one that comes in and out of my uh, arsenal of what I use, like to use a lot. And I think I'm going to phase back into it because we've just been without it for several months because it took that long to get here. Um, so yeah, I would agree with that. Some people have recently, I've just noticed some of the athletes or just people in general, they, cause cardio equipment is usually one of the ones that, you know, people don't really want to collect. It's nice to have a, a whole bunch of them for a variety, but sometimes people will, will swap them out, whether it's like, okay, I have an air dine for a while, but I kind of want this assault runner because of X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to swap this out upgrade it, sell this and get this. So I guess just knowing that thinking long-term of making sure that that's worth it. And, um, that was the thing that you're replacing with or that you're losing, you can still get out of something else. So like the airdyne has great qualities for shorter sprints, I think. So as long as you can still get that out of it, then, then you'll be fine. And, and as long as what you're, what you're gaining is a bit more than what you might be losing. So thinking of, um, I guess if you really wanted to get into the weeds of energy systems and conditioning or, 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 or even strength stuff, um, make sure you're, if you're replacing something, make sure you're getting just as much, if not more than what you might be losing if you are replacing something. Yeah. And then space, I guess would be the other consideration, right? So if you need more space, like I, I still like, I don't want to get rid of anything, but I do wish I had less stuff in my garage. Like I wish I could just kind of pick what I needed for the day. Cause I, I like just like super empty garage gym, a lot of space. And so if I'm only doing stuff with a barbell for a few months or kettlebells or like whatever, I don't really want anything else in there getting in my way. Um, so that's another thing to consider. Like if you have, if you did have like a reverse hyper and it's just like sitting there and you never use it, it's a, it's a great piece of equipment to have, but if it's like costing you valuable real estate, you have a small space and you haven't touched it, you know, maybe do the, like, I haven't used that in one year. If that's a great red flag for probably getting rid of something, if, if you need some space. Right. And so if you do need space, I would very, uh, diligently consider, you know, what is going to be the biggest bang for your buck. Like what you're saying, like, like you don't need a bunch of different cardio machines, but you do need one that can like get everything done. I would argue that that's the airdyne in, I know a lot of people hate the airdyne yeah. or whatever, but you can go light on an airdyne. Like you can just like pedal like BS on an airdyne and be in zone two very easily. Like I know the air airdyne can really suck when that's all that anyone ever focuses on with the airdyne, but you can just chill on an airdyne for recovery. But then you can also go to like next level glycolytic conditioning on airdyne that you really almost can't on any other piece of equipment. And if you can, it's, it's still not the same. Like I have a concept two bike, which I can like slam it up to eight or 10 and I can pedal as hard as I want. And it's still similar to the airdyne feeling and it is a glycolytic response. But since the arms aren't there, it's just not quite as bad. Like if, if airdyne was 10 out of 10 bad, the concept two bike can only get me to like an eight out of 10 bad. Cause it's really just cause you don't have that extra movement in the upper body. So I think 
one piece of equipment there, like if you are limited on space and you need to upgrade an Airdyne might get it all done. Um, comfortable seat. You can do almost anything on it. And this is making me want to buy an Airdyne now. Cause I, so speaking of equipment, I got rid of, I mentioned to you before we started the podcast, but I did have an Airdyne. I got rid of it. Uh, but not really my, when COVID kicked off and all the gyms are closing down, I had a friend who regularly went to a gym, right. And, uh, they didn't have access to anything, nothing at home. And it was a good friend of mine. So I just gave him my Airdyne. I was like, you can have it. I got a lot of equipment, have the Airdyne and, uh, stay fit during COVID. And so I just gave it to them and I haven't replaced it because I have three, four, how many, I don't know, three or four <laughs> aerobic machines in my garage. So Yeah. Is it three? It's a, it's a bike. It's a rower. It's an erg. It's a treadmill. It's four. Wait, did I count that right? Bike, rower, ski erg, treadmill. Yeah, four. Okay. I was like, so, yeah, you said erg. I was like, well, you technically have yeah, two ergs, three ergs. I have two ergs. <laughs> so yeah, it would be hard for me to justify a fifth piece of cardio equipment. It's like, how much cardio do you need, bro? Like, <laughs> I would probably have <laughs> yeah. to get rid of something. I don't know which one I would get rid of because they all have uh, a purpose to me, at least I'd probably get rid of the rower. I think, and you really have to like, it happened to you. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of like done with the rower, right? You're like, whatever. But I did what you did probably for like six or seven years. <laughs> I was just like, that was it. There was the rower. It was me and the rower. If I was doing a, uh, other than running outside. And so I'm just so done with the rower, even up to now, you know how some people have like these stories of like, they drank too much tequila. So they just can't like, Oh yeah. I can't do it anymore. Like I always hear that from somebody or maybe they ate the same with something. Like I ate too many eggs once and I threw up so I can never eat eggs again. That's how I feel about the rower. And it's been a while now. I've taken a very long break. I've even tried getting back on it and I'm still like, ah, I still need a break from you rower. So I could end up selling that if I sold anything. They just need to have that adapt adapter, whatever that goes from rower to, um, skier, like, it seems like bike. such a simple thing as the exact same thing or yeah. bike, like, no, to all of it. It's, I already got it mapped out in my head, rower, pick it up, ski erg, things fold out yeah. and you got pedals and a seat. Like you can do it. They can do it. The, the, the concept to infinity. That's just, that's what it should be. Yeah. They, I wouldn't even care if they charge the same price as it would cost for all three of them. You know, and I, I don't know if that's like $2,500. Like, $2, yeah. Like if, if that's what it costs, cause you're getting all three. Like, I wonder if they're like, they don't want to cannibalize their business. Cause I know for a fact they could figure that out. Cause if you just had it as like a big rectangle, like don't think of it as like how they look now. Think of it as like a, a very large rectangle. You could very easily fit a rower on top of that. Go up the other side. The other side of the rectangle has the skier handles where there would also be the foot placements. And then inside the rectangle is where the housing for the pedals and the seat to pop up. Like this is easy stuff. I'm not even an engineer. Come on. We can do this concept too. So DIY concept to infinity. Nope. No, I don't DIY cardio equipment. I've seen it done, but I don't, uh, I drew the line. Uh, well, I think that's good. All right. Yeah. We'll get out of here. Well, those are some considerations and thoughts. If you're thinking about upgrading, um, but yeah, if you guys are on YouTube watching this right now, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment, thumbs up. And, uh, you know, when you subscribe, we have more stuff coming out on a pretty regular basis. What is our full publishing schedule right now, Joe, for YouTube? We got Monday, Monday, right? Wednesday, typically Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday, typically we Monday, to. Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Unless something, unless something happens all aimed at making you a more autonomous athlete, got good programming stuff coming, all sorts of stuff for you guys. So subscribe to the channel. Most of you are listening to us on the podcast feed and that's cool um love the podcast feed as well so we just can't interact with you guys as much there so that's why we've been pushing youtube lately we can get comments and, and other stuff so uh if you are on the podcast you know five star view positive comment we really enjoy that but that's it for this one guys thanks for watching or listening for listening to the garage gym athlete podcast if you want to learn more go to garagegymathlete.com you can learn about our training let us send you a copy of our book the garage gym athlete or you can even get featured on the garage gym athlete podcast thanks for listening